Let's say you want to cook some spaghetti. First off, this intro might be a little too complicated, but you'll learn how I make spaghetti. Now this is what you would not do. You throw some spaghetti noodles, some sauce, and hamburger meat all in a pan and then wait for it to boil. That would just be some bad soup. Instead, you cook the noodles in a big pot, and then you brown the hamburger meat in another pan, instead of doing them in the same thing. This way, when the time is right, you can strain out the water and have just noodles, and then you can add in the cooked meat and the sauce. In a really weird sense, you outsourced the meat cooking to another pan, instead of trying to cook the meat in the same pot that the noodles were boiling. You'll see how this relates to side chains in a second. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we're going to explain what side chains are, how they work, and why we need them if we want to scale to the moon. So first off, what are side chains? Side chains are a separate blockchain that is connected to another blockchain through a two-way peg to help process some of the data from the main blockchain. Now, before we move on too much, let's go over a review of what a layer two scaling solution is and why we need them. Basically, main blockchains are really slow, and if we want to try to speed them up, they either aren't as secure or they aren't as safe. So we have to find a secondary method to make them faster. These solutions are called layer two scaling solutions, and we actually have a whole video where we briefly go over a bunch of popular ones, but this is a specific video about one called sidechain. Chains. Now, sidechains attempt to take some of the work that a main blockchain needs to do and do it for them. Well, how do they do this? Most sidechains are a little more centralized than the main chain, but this is okay because we will trade off security for speed, just we don't want to do it on the main chain. This may be our first important point of sidechains. They are responsible for their own security. Another point is that sidechains need their own validators or miners. They can even have their own consensus mechanisms, meaning if they wanted to, they could use proof of stake or proof of work or something as crazy as proof of space and time. Validators or miners usually earn rewards for their work in a sidechain in the same manner that all other blockchains work. Now I want to talk about merge mining, because one of the cool things about sidechains is that many of them allow what is called merge mining. And this is a term that means you can mine or validate two blockchains at once, earning double the rewards with roughly the same amount of work. Now the technicals of how this work are outside the scope of this video, but you can leave a comment below if you want us to explain merge mining in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe either if we come up with it. Now the next big point of this video is to explain the two-way peg. They call it a two-way peg because they are pegged moving onto the side chain and then pegged moving back to the main chain. We call these two processes locking up and releasing. Let's go over locking up first. So when you move your coins and tokens from the main chain to the side chain, you have to lock them up. Otherwise, you'd have a bunch of free tokens on both chains. Locking them up usually means they go to a wallet or a contract controlled by a machine or code, not a human, and that you have to do something special to get them back. Nevertheless, when you lock up your coins on the main chain, you get your coins and tokens on the side chain. They are basically the same thing, but this allows us to move things back and forth without allowing people to duplicate their coins. The second part of this peg is called releasing. So when you locked up your coins and tokens on the main chain, the protocol accepted them and actually meant you free coins and tokens on the side chain that are representations of what you have on the main chain. Then when you want to switch back, you destroy your coins and tokens on the side chain and you get to release your funds on the main chain. So back to our crazy spaghetti analogy earlier, if you did all the transactions and data processing on the main chain, it would get super congested and backed up. Similarly, if we cook the spaghetti, water it was boiling in, the meat and the sauce all in one pan, it just wouldn't work well. Instead, we split up multiple pans that have different purposes. In the case of a side chain, it is meant to be a bit more centralized, but allow many more transactions so that the network can scale. When users are ready to move back to the main chain, they just have to move their funds through the locking and releasing mechanism and hope that the federation lets them. This brings us to our next point, the federation. A federation is the technical term for the middleman that is in charge of locking and releasing those funds and assets between the two chains. Now, not all side chains need a a federation, but many of them do because they're quite useful. Some federations are completely code, while many federations are actually controlled by the side chain's organization. The federation is in charge of making sure whatever is locked up is exactly what's on the side chain. This way, the side chain never has more value and tokens in it than those that are locked up on the main chain. In fact, 
Many people say federations are a huge risk of centralization between moving funds back and forth between a main chain and a side chain. Now, one example of a side chain we want to talk about is Rootstock. Rootstock, or RSK as it is commonly called, is simply a side chain to Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't really have the ability to do smart contracts. Mostly, Bitcoin just processes transactions. However, Rootstock is a side chain that allows the usage of smart contracts. Rootstock's federation is actually made up of 25 of the biggest blockchain exchanges out there, and they have created this Bitcoin bridge where you can transfer your real Bitcoin for Rootstock versions of Bitcoin so that you can do smart contract stuff with it. Rootstock is pretty much Ethereum, but before Bitcoin. You can run smart contracts, you can use gas, and even the development programming is similar. And we couldn't talk about sidechains without talking about Ethereum's sidechain, Polygon. Polygon, or the Matic Network, is roughly a sidechain for Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has been crazy backed up in the past couple months, meaning high transaction fees. Polygon, which was formerly named Matic, is a sidechain to Ethereum that allows you to perform almost the same interactions, although tenths to hundredths to even to a thousand times cheaper. The block time on Polygon is 2 seconds, compared to Ethereum's 10 seconds. Using the Matic bridge, you can move assets from Ethereum to Polygon in less than an hour at any time that you want to. You can also move them back. Polygon is one of the most well-known sidechains due to its mass adoption and ability to interact with Ethereum. We actually have a whole video on Polygon coming up, so get ready to watch that video. One thing to keep in mind with sidechains is that they are permanent solutions that are kind of difficult to greatly change once they are in place. Rollups and channels are two other layer 2 scaling solutions that are not as permanent, but they can be changed quicker and easier. Faster iterations means faster feedback, which means faster overall development. But sidechains definitely work. Anyways, we have covered almost everything there is to know about a general idea of a sidechain in the crypto world, including some examples. So we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. We really hope that you learned something. And most of all, we hope to see you in the next video.